Welcome to part 2 of the car AI series. In this part we're going to set up our car so it's drivable. This will be a short part and doesn't contain any scripting for now. We're just going to set up this car so we can use it in the later episodes. So let's have a look at our car. Here we can see the parent of the car. It's just an empty game object and if we open it we can see we have two objects in it. We've got the visuals and we've got the camera that's way behind the car. Here you can see the preview window. So if you take a look at the visuals, this is also empty game object, which stores all the meshes of the car. So if you open this, we can see that we have a body, so the car itself. Then we've got our bumpers, the front and the back, and all the wheels that are separated. The first thing we're going to do is put all these wheels in one object, so it's easier to see. Click on your visuals, then go to game object, create empty, and drag this under your visuals. Let's rename this to wheels. Make sure the transform is reset, so click on the gears and click reset, so it's 0, 0, 0. And then you drag all those wheels in the object. Don't reset those, because otherwise they will move out of position. The only thing that needs to be reset is this empty game object with the wheels. The way we make things drivable inside Unity is to use the physics component wheel collider. It's on a physics and then wheel collider. You can compare this collider kind of with a circle collider. Only this has functions like spring, motor and steering. So this is made for making wheels. To get those attached to the car, we need to make empty game objects at the same position of the wheels itself. An easy way to do this is duplicate this wheels object with all the wheels inside it. So make sure you select the wheels, then click Ctrl D to duplicate. And let's rename this to wheel colliders. Let's close the normal wheels and open up the wheel colliders. So now that we have duplicated our wheels, we have two times the meshes of the wheels. So as you can see, there are two wheels inside one. Let's select all the wheels in the colliders and remove the mesh renderer and the mesh filter. So we only have to transform. Then add our parent object, the imaginary car. We're going to add the component rigid body and the mass or the weight of the car. We set this to 1200. Then we go to our body and add the component the mesh collider and select convex. This simplifies our mesh so it doesn't calculate every face for itself but creates a new object for the collision detection. So if we uncheck this, it will take every face as a separate collision and if you click convex unity creates its own simplified mesh of our car it's not very accurate but we don't need accurate collision for our car so it's better to check convex then we select all our four wheels again the colliders so only the empty game objects then we go to add a component and we add the wheel collider to it make sure you keep them selected so you only need to change one and as you can see, we have four large green circles. Those circles represent the radius of the collider. So here in the section wheel collider, we have our radius. So we need to turn this down to get them at about the same radius of our mesh of the wheel. An easy way to do this is reset the rotation of this car to zero. So it's aligned with the axis. Then below our axis view, we have here a selection mode perspective. If you click on this, we change to isometric, then we click on the x-axis to align our camera view with the x-axis and then we press F to focus on the car. And now we can see the car from the side. Select our four wheels again, make sure to select them all at once. And then let's play around with the radius. I think 0.11 is about the right size. Turn the suspension distance to zero. And now we can see that 0 0.11 is about the same size of the wheels. Let's set this back to 0 0.3. Or actually, let's change this to a smaller number, say around 0 0.09. This is the maximum length that the wheels can have their suspension. If the car is in the air, our wheels can't fall down further than this radius. So they stay a bit with the car. You don't have to understand this, because this will become clear in a later episode. 
Let's go back to perspective mode. So click on this switch thingy. It says right now. And we get back to perspective mode. <coughs> so make sure all the colliders are at the same position of the wheels. If it isn't, please make sure to follow on the video at the exact steps. If you hit play now, the car should be standing on its wheels. So let's test it out. Make sure the car is above the ground and also the wheel colliders are above the ground. So let's hit play. And you can see that the car falls a little bit and then stops. So let's check it from the scene real quick. Select your wheel colliders. And if they are at the ground, you're sure you have done the right thing. So that's it for this episode. In the next part, we're going to create a script that controls the steering of the car. So whether it turns left or right. It also interpolates the steering angle. So if the path object is way to the left, it will turn. It will make a sharper turn than when it's almost in front of the car. But this will be for the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode because then the car will turn all by itself. But for now, bye bye.